Man, I waited my whole life to say this. Get your ass out of my fidget. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Right, too kind. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. For favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting the subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, so we see that the hush money trial is still going on. I don't know how they're going to get some um, a jury for this because everybody know who Trump is. He's the most popular person in America, but they have a jury set up. And Mr. Bragg is going to try to convict Trump over hush money that he's given to Stormy Daniels, allegedly. But now we have an OnlyFans star. This young lady here, Farha Khalidi, Woo! she claims that the Biden administration has given her some money to be a shill for the Democrat Party. What? All right. Let's hear what she got to say. Well, um, I started TikTok like the spring semester of my senior year. And I was like, fuck, I finally have to start applying for law school. And then like, you know, female privilege life is so easy for a you know woman. Obviously, I, I lucked out. I'm just kidding. I lucked out, and then you know TikTok was basically full time for me. And the guy was taking ads by the time I graduated college from like the Biden administration and Planned yeah. Parenthood and like dating apps and stuff. So it was uh, like fully financially, you know, sustainable. So you were getting the Biden administration was buying ads from you. Yeah, I was doing full on political propaganda, and they would just they oh really with like what kind of like Biden created. 10 million jobs yeah, this it, Yeah, honestly. And it, the funny thing is they're like, do not disclose this is an ad because, you know, they're like, technically it's not a product, so you don't have to disclose it's uh -huh. an ad. Because I think they just wanted, like, some edgy girl of color to just tell people like when when they nominated like katanji brown jackson they're like can you say like as a person of color you know that you feel reflected and it's like a white woman emailing this to me and yeah. she's like giving me this script and i'm like no and she's like please and i'm like no i'll say i'll like talk about the news of it but i'm not gonna be like i'm not gonna have a white person tell me to be like you know this is how i feel as a person of color like it's just so i think that black so me slightly on like you know yeah so what we're we gonna do about that people what we're we gonna do about that it's so funny that every time that Trump does something like go to Chick-fil-A and they have a crowd of come people of supporters, I got the haters to come out and say, oh, it was stage. He goes to New York and meet the construction crew. Oh, it was stage. Everything that Trump does is stage. Everything Biden does is organic, right? <laughs> Now we have this young lady coming out and claiming that Mr. Biden administration has been giving her money to use to push his propaganda out. Propaganda. So stuff. the Biden administration sees, oh, here's this young. Yeah, I mean, they use like a conduit. It's yeah. not like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not Biden, but it's, um, it's, 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 like, a, it's like a it's like a third party you know what uh, i mean it's like a media company yeah. that's doing it on his behalf i'm not blaming him for this yeah and the message is like because you're a dark-skinned woman 
you will be inspired by Kentaji Brown Jackson and all the kids should support her. Yeah, they're like basically as like another black person just say that like <laughs> you feel reflected by Katanji. I'm like, no, I'll talk about like Katanji's background and her accomplishments, but like I never, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll never, I'm not gonna say like the corny stuff. Even if it was a brown person emailing it to me, I'm like, no, that's not like how I feel. Like I don't look yeah. at like Katanji and feel like, wow. Yeah, yeah. But she's not the only one. They've caught another a uh, couple of TikTok stars that said the same thing. It's actually really hard in this space, right? Like we have like 45 seconds to record a video, keep right. people's attention. And a lot of the people on our side, like if they start hearing, like I've actually done it before. I've, I've criticized like a Democrats, like specifically Hakeem Jeffries. And it, it all just went south. Like I started losing followers. Like it's bad, right? And I really want to be that person that like reaches the other side because Democrats, I mean, they're horrible at their jobs, right? They do a lot of sh shitty things, although it, I'll vote for them all the time. Um, but it, it's also hard in the space to criticize That's a them. good, can we clip yeah. that quote? They're hard at their don't. jobs. Please, they do please, shitty please don't, please don't, please don't clip that. Them. Please, no, 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 please, please don't. Yeah, organic, right? Organic. The Gen Z folks, these two young little, they've, I've seen a couple of their uh, videos on TikTok, and they even admitted that it's been paid. Totally against the law. Totally against the FCC rules. What are we going to do about that? I'm going to show you how a story becomes an angle. And today's example are these two guys. Harry Sison, who you know is typical Democrat, and his buddy Chris Mowry. Now, the general way that a story begins is that a reporter sees something that doesn't quite make sense to them. And in this case, the thing that doesn't make sense is how have these two guys gained such traction so quickly? I mean, if you look at Harry's Twitter account, it literally says it was made in December 2011 when he would have only been eight years old. Chris Mowry says he only sent his first political tweet a couple months ago and is not owned by any administration and doesn't work for the DNC. So you see that and you think to yourself, how did these guys blow up so quickly into these liberal TikTok stars? Well, the second part of a story is you look at a common denominator between the two things that don't make sense. And if you look at the bios of those two guys, they have the same exact email address, MGMT. So now we figure out what exactly that is. And they have a website, Pallet Management. It says that they are a talent management company that represents brands and content creators. It says that they provide public relations services and they even have an in-house counsel. So Chris and Harry, whose content is pretty much identical to each other, also have the same talent management company. At which point you get to step three, figure out who's funding all of this. And a quick check of FEC records shows that pallet management is being paid by the Democrat National Committee. They were paid over $200,000 for paid media and online advertising. When a bunch of liberal content creators visited the White House a couple months ago, the trip was organized with the help of the founder of pallet management. And the DNC even paid them a retainer in order to cover their travel costs and expenses. So there you have it, folks. They claim they're not being paid, but they are in fact being paid. Whenever you see something like this, it never happens naturally. There's always somebody or something behind the scenes controlling everything. And in this case, it's the DNC that's paying these kids a lot of money through a talent management company in order to spread their propaganda online. If I wanted to go even further on this story, I would look up what their parents do for a living. How many times have you seen Donald Trump pay any influencer some money to talk about him? None. Zero. They just naturally do it. But Biden has been caught again. This is the fourth, fifth, sixth person who has come out and says that the Biden administration has paid me to be a shill, to push his propaganda. Now, how many viral videos of Biden have you seen? <laughs> None. And now all the viral videos of Trump all over the place for free. For free. Because they naturally do it. They're not, they're not being paid to say some lie. Hi, my name is Cooper, and this is a day in my life as a White House intern. You know me. Banana appointment, love. Yeah, I didn't tell you to do that. It's called initiative. <laughs> Hi, White House, this is Cooper. Please. Mm, I don't think so. Please oh, doesn't let the internet end. This is yeah. actually the entrance Robert. to the West Wing. This is so fun, and it's really prestigious. Hey, POTUS. Is Olivia Rodrigo still here? No. 
We've come a long way in our fight against this virus. We've vaccinated 160 million Americans. Are you getting this all down? Don't worry, Queen. It's all right here. Wow, look at this here. My goodness. This is the influencers that Biden is paying to push propaganda. These people, look at this. For the president's dog. Our queen, love you. I love you. We're about to go. Is there anything in my teeth? Leaving on cloud nine. The president of the United States gave me a cookie. He gave me a cookie in the Oval Office. Now here's the question. Do I eat it or do I save it? It has a seal. I, please, honestly, tell me. Oh, everyone, I got to pet the dog. I got to pet his dog. I'm still in shock and don't be mad, but I don't get to post any of the footage until after the interview airs on Sunday night, but it's going to be worth it because I can't wait for you to hear everything that we talked about. I left with a lot of hope and optimism, not only for just trans people, but many different topics. And the fact that our president has watched Days of Girlhood, it's kind of epic. <laughs> oh my goodness. You want to see something even more cringier? The Jonas Brothers. Jesus Christ. Bing bong. Are you vaccinated? Yes, sir. Hey, yo. Who's the president, man? Who's the president? Byron. Who's the president? Byron. What do you want to tell Joe Byron right now? What's up, baby? Take me out the dinner. Uh, do we get it? We got it. Man, oh, man. Guys, I said this before, and I'm going to say this again. Do not wait till election day to vote. All right? Anything could happen. You know, you might get sick. You might, <laughs> your car might go down. Your kids might get sick. You might be pregnant. Your hemorrhoids might flare up. Something. All right. Do not wait till election day to vote. If your state is one of the states that can vote early, go as soon as you can and bring a friend. All right. Do not give it a chance. Do not wait till election day to vote because anything can happen. And we got to defeat these knuckleheads. The sooner you get to vote and on election day, you start and get more people out there to vote. Spend more energy getting people to vote. Don't vote on election day. Vote early. If you're going to do by mail, mail it in early. All right? You got to make a statement. Do not fall for the polls either. That's another trick they're going to try to do. They're going to say, oh, Donald Trump is leading by 20 points. And then you're going to sit home. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. All right? We got to make a statement. Vote early, and if you're going to vote by mail, vote by mail early. And make sure you bring a friend, all right? That's my thoughts for the day. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends, and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> All right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you haters, get off my lawn.